Assalamualaikum and hi. So in this video, we're going to discuss about the legal environment and resolutions of SRC case based on chapter 7 and chapter 8. And my name is Nuliana Bito Osman, my metric number 25583. So according to CCM record, this company, SRC International Senderan Berhad, was founded on 7 January 2011 as a private company limited by share. And this company was not owned by 1MDB at the establishment time. But 8 months later, uh, this company has increased its allotments of share to 1 million and 900,000 from them were issued to 1MDB. This made uh, 1MDB the majority shareholder and effectively the owner of SIC. Uh, but then, one year later, on 2012, Minister of Finance took over SIC. And if you see, during the period of 2012 until 2017, many from the upper management of this company has resigned from their positions and according to CCM, it's also show that there is a multiple changes in the firm's secretary. Uh, right now, as I see up back to the news due to Datuk Sri Najib trial where he he is accused of money laundering amounting 42 million ringgit. So the discovery of crime appeared when Datuk Subo Muhammad Yassin turned himself uh, into the MECC and with the report made by Datuk Subo, the MECC will identify uh, the person suspecting committing the offence and in this case the main suspect is Datuk Sri Najib because there is a clear evidence that the money has been transferred into his personal account and the collection of sufficient evidence is important to prosecute the suspect before the court and if you see the chronology of the this case, uh, Datuk Sinajit was first charged in the station's court uh, with several charges, including abusing his power over this company fund, totaling 42 million. And later, uh, this case was transferred to the High Court due to application made by Datuk Sinajit himself. And it was allowed by the High Court, Muhammad Nazla, Muhammad Ghazali. And currently, right now, uh, this case is being tried in the High Court. But Najib, Datuk Sri Najib also have made a several application to the Court of Appeal against the High Court decisions. For example, on August 10, uh, Muhammad Nazla Muhammad Ghazali has dismissed Najib's application for a gang order restrain, restraining the media to publish statement based on this case. But later, in August 10, Najib filed an appeal at the Court of Appeal against the High Court uh, about the de decisions of High Court on refusal to the gang order. Uh, the Court of Appeal has a jurisdiction to hear all appeals on questions of law or decisions made by the subordinate court or made by the High Court. And in this case, the Court of Appeal heard the appeal made by Najib, but it was dismissed on March 21st. Assalamualaikum. My name is uh, Nur Shazanaja binti Mak Shukri, my menteri nama 255798. Uh, now I want to talk about acts and legislation. Why we need to use the act and legislation? It was a most important instrument of government in organizing society and protect the citizen. It also can determine among others the right and responsibilities of individuals and authorities to whom legis legislation is applied. So in this case, Najib is an individual that 
lagi uh, to an uh, individual that legislation need to apply to protect the citizen which is us we as a con uh, in one country so uh, as all you know that accused person Munajid Razak was facing seven charge involving SRC international funding totaling 42 million and of course charge under act and legislation so there are a few acts uh, which has been used in this case first is so this is a first uh, search act that has been charged under Najib Razak so the uh, first is a section 23 subsection 1 of the MACC Act 2009 punishable under section 24 of the same act. So the punishment if he convicted is jail term uh, of up to 20 years and a fine of the not less than first time the amount or value of the bribe or 10,000 whichever is higher. So why is uh, he being charged under this act is because uh, of the first He's often that abuse that he's abusing his power over SRC International Sudan Brahat funds totaling forty two million. As uh, we know, on four July two thousand eighteen, Najib was alleged to have used his position as a public official, with the namely Prime Minister and Minister of Finance of Russia, to commit bribery involving forty two million when he participated or was involved in a decision. Uh, behalf of the Malaysian government to provide government guarantee for loans from the retirement fund incorporate to SRC international amount for billions. So this is an uh, example that I'm in MACC Act 2009. As you can see, this uh, section 23 and section 24 is uh, being charged for Najib Razak for the first charge. Second is a, the second set, uh, act that has been charged is section 409 of the penal code. So the punishment uh, for if he convicted is a maximum jail term of up to 20 years and whipping and also a fine if convicted. So why uh, why he is being charged under this act is because on the same day is a four July two thousand eighteen. Uh, he uh Najib Razak was uh being accused of having committed CBT of criminal or criminal breach of trust involving amount of twenty seven million on the first count, five million on the second count. Uh, which at the same place and period and 10 million at the same place on the next two months after first and second count as a public servant or agent. What is a crimi criminal breach of trust by public servant or agent? Uh, it is a wh whoever being in any manner entrusted with property or with any domain of a property in his capacity as a public servant or agent uh, to commit the criminal breach of trust. So, like this, in this case, uh, Najib Razak is our former Prime Minister as a public servant who commit the criminal breach of trust involving uh, 42 million. Next is uh, for the third uh, act is the section 4, subsection 1, section B of the Anti-Money Laundering, Anti-Terrorism Financing and Proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act 2001 which provide for the penalty under section 4 subsection 1 of the same act. So the punishment if a convicted is maximum 15 years jail and fine up to 5 million or 5 times the amount whichever is higher for its change. So this uh, act is applies on the three, uh, on, on about 3 counts of money laundering involves same money which is 42 million. Uh, in proceeds from unlawful activities via real time electronic transfer of funds and securities into two M Islamic Bemerhat accounts, which uh, means that two uh, have the money laundering have been uh, account uh, have been money inflow in two uh, account number. So, so this three X is uh, used for 
are the seven chance that facing our of of our former prime minister. Thank you. Okay, so I will be introduced to you about the key individuals that involved in this case. So first is Tuan Muhammad Nazlan bin Muhammad Ghazali, who is the High Court Judge. So he will be presiding over the criminal case of former Prime Minister Datuk Seri Najib Tun Razak. He has course a Bachelor of Arts in Jurisprudence and a Master of Arts from University of Oxford. He has been a barrister at Law of Lincoln's Inn. Before joining the judiciary, uh, he previously worked at Securities Commissions and Bank. He also practiced at Zai Ibrahim and Company for five years as a partner. Okay, next is Tansri Muhammad Shafi'i Abdullah, who is the lead defense lawyer. So here are some of the career background. So he began serving as an attorney on April 26, 1985. He also has been a deputy public prosecutor before moving to the private sector and become the commissioner of the Human Rights Commission of Malaysia, Suhapa. Uh, next is Tansri Tommy Thomas, who is the attorney general. He is best known as a constitutional law expert and a civil litigator in court cases. He holds Bachelor of Law in University of Manchester and also Master of Science International Relations in London Schools of Economics. He has been a lawyer in Malaysia for 42 years and um, he has involved in many high profile cases in Malaysia. So here is the list of the prosecution team and the defense team. The prosecution team is led by the Tommy Thomas, while the uh, defense team is led by the Tansri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah. Hi, my name is Noor Farhana and my metric number is 251129. Um, okay, we will move to the main witness of the SRC International Senator Bahad. There are 16 witnesses taking stand in this case which is started on 3 December last year. Najib was the first witness to testify in this defense trial. It took 243 page witness statement where Datuk Seri Najib denied that he knew the money that came into his account was from SRC International. Other high-profile witnesses who testified in these cases were former Ministry at Prime Minister Department, Datuk Seri Jamil Khair Baharum, former Attorney General Tan Sri Muhammad Appendi Ali and former MACC Chief Commissioner Tan Sri Jizukifri Ahmad and Latifah Koya. Okay, let's look at the background of the witness in this case. Datuk Seri Anifah Ahman is a Malaysian political who have served as the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Malaysia from 2009 to 2018. Datuk Seri Anifah is also the former Member of Parliament for Bureau Fort from year 1989 until 2004 and Kimanis from year 2004 until 2019 in Sabah. He was a former member of United Malayan National Organization, which is AMNO, is part of the Barisan National Co Coalition, until he quit to be an independent politician in 2018. Datuk Seri Anifah Aman was one of the representative, representative formation on Datuk Seri Najib official trip to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, between 11 January uh, between 13 January to 16 January 2010. Datuk Seri Anifah during SRC International Trial, he claimed that is common practice in AMNO for the party president to be personally in charge of most political found. He stated that putting money in personal account of Prime Minister would be easy to control. When Najib asked for opinion on transfer to his personal bank account, he assured him that it did not it did not matter as the donation was to be used for corporate social responsibility and political purpose. 
Okay, next is Datuk Seri Jamil Khai Bahrum. Datuk Seri Jamil Khai Bahrum is a Malaysian politician, former military office. He was the member of parliament for the seat of Jerai Kedak from 2009 until 2018 and a minister in the Prime Minister Department from 2013 until 2018. Before entering politics through an appointment to the Senate in 2009, he was a major general in military religious group known as Kaget of the Malaysian Army. He obtained his Bachelor of Sharia from the University of Malaya in 1989-86 and Master in Islamic Study for the Graduate School of Islamic and Social Science, Godrobra University in Virginia, Virginia in 2000. He began his military service in 1986 as Lieutenant in the Military Region Corps Kaget. He was promoted in Colonel in 2002 and Brigadier General, General in 2005. In 2005, he was appointed director of Kaget, the first ever two-star general to serve in the capital city. Datuk Seri Jamil Khair previously verified that an informal meeting between the two heads had taken place at King Abdullah Place in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia on 11, uh, on 11 January 2010, which is he attended as Minister in Islamic Affairs. MACC officer assistant made further investigation on Datuk Jamil Khair were brought between 11 January until uh, 16 January 2010. They found that he was given speech on 11 January 2010 during event organized, organized by Jackie in Putrajaya. Okay, next, uh, Latifa Koya. Latifa Koya is a Malaysian politician, lawyer and human rights activist currently serving as the 5th Chief Commission in the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission. She was a member of the People's Justice Party, which is PKR, and sat on the Central Executive Committee of PKR. On 4 January 2019, she was appointed as a Chief Commissioner of the MACC on the two-year contract, effective 1 June 2019. She resigned on 3 June 2019 to avoid conflict of interest after, after being appointed as a Fifth Chief Commissioner of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission. Latifa graduated from the University of London with a Bachelor of Law in 1997. She later obtained the Malaysian Certificate in Legal Practice in August 1999, enabled her to practice as a lawyer in the Malaysia. Latifa Koya was the first person that obtained the night audit tape that, uh, tape that showed an alleged cover-up surrounding the 1MDB investigation. She told High Court that the audio was found outside one of the Malaysian Anti Corruption Commission Investigator Officer House. She was asked to outline the chronology of events lead to the January lead up to the January 10 press conference, result in the bombshell revelation of record that she claimed show conspiracy in the latest government corruption.
KWAP is one of the finest support of SRC as I mentioned before. Uh, how KWAP, other than that, KWAP involved in the SRC cases by uh, of the one of the witness in SRC CEO Dato Azian Muhammad No. 66, the, uh, the witness for SRC cases. The next related bodies is Gobi Coal Energy Limited. Uh, Gobi Coal and Energy Limited uh, is an emerging cooking coal producer based in Mongolia. Gobi Coal, one of the company that uh, is one of the company that SRC has been invested when the talks United been questioned about the money that uh, flow in his account. He stated that the money has been invested in the energy sector uh, energy sector project. Next is Andan Group. Andan Group uh, comprised AMMB Holding Berhad. It's one of the largest banking group in Malaysia whose, uh, whose core business are retailing banking, wholesale banking, Islam banking, and life and general insurance. Uh, how Andan Group uh, related to SSC cases is uh, charge committed, uh, charges committed by Datuk Sri Najib that he misappropriate 27 million, uh, 5 million and 4 billion at Islamic Bank Berhad and Islamic Bank Berhad. Uh, next is Coastal Energy. Coastal Energy Company is an international exploration and production company which principal asset in Thailand and Malaysia which has been merged with uh, CEPSA. Uh, coastal Energy was believed has been purchased, which means money from SRC was flowed to the company through repayment. Coastal Energy is the subsidiary of CEPSA. Okay, CEPSA is a Spanish, uh, Spanish petroleum company commonly known as CEPSA is a Spanish multinational oil and gas company. CSP is the parent company of uh, Coastal Energy. 1MDB, uh, One Malaysia Development Berhad started of as Terengganu Investment Authority, DIA, which was in initiated by former Menteri Besar Terengganu Ahmad Said in 2008. Uh, this acquisition by MO, uh, Menteri Minister of Finance took over TIA and amended its name to YMDB which is we know uh, Datuk Sri Najib. Next is BNN Consultancy Service Sudir uh, It's a professional service firm in Malaysia specializing in strategic corporate consultancy, advisory and management service. Uh, during Datuk Sri Najib trial, he mentions that the establishment of SRC was found through BNN Consultancy Syndrome uh, Service Syndrome Berhad. Next is Petro Saudi International Limited. Petro Saudi is involved worldwide in oil and gas project. Petro Saudi International is privately owned oil exploration and production company, which is main office in UK, Saudi Arabia, and Switzerland. Petro Saudi is related to the so-called Project Uganda which has been mentioned in the previous group presentation. So that's all uh, companies that are uh, bodies related to SRC uh, cases and that's all from our group.